despite what Greg is thinking, this is not about the impending legalization of marijuana in Canada. <laughs> and how it affects focus. Yes. <laughs> the focus findings of marijuana. Okay. Uh, we're in December. Yeah. Um, which for our curriculum, all of these lectures we're doing this year, means we're actually getting close to the point in mid-January where we are done our curriculum, where we've gone through all of our topics. And that's why we're getting on to things like joints and long bone fractures and these things that are less of the kind of workhorse um, applications we use. Uh, and that means that these talks are going to be a little bit shorter. They're going to have less clips from our center. And I don't want people listening to think that that means they're going to be lower quality. I want them to think these are the areas that we in the future need to be fleshing out, right? These are the, this is the frontier stuff. Uh, we've got to be thinking about um, how we can use point of care ultrasound for these applications more robustly. So I challenge this generation of future leaders to make these talks better in the future. Okay, uh, I uh, don't have any conflicts of interest and we have this slide in our talk now partly because um, our project coordinator, David Nissan, did an amazing job of getting us uh, accredited by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. So you can now use your participation in these um, rounds, these broadcasted rounds uh, for your maintenance of certification credits. And um, we'll have a slide at the end that kind of goes over how and our emails will tell you about how. Um, and feel free to reach out to David uh, if you have questions. Is that fair to say, David? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got a few links here, um, and these will be part of our uh, website. And you can take a quick screen cap if you want to know how to get to the links. So they'll come in again at the end of the talk. Okay, so this is pretty simple objectives. We've got a few different applications for joint effusions and dislocations that we're going to talk about, and we want you to know how to perform them with the probe interpret the images that you get, and then why to do them instead of not using POCUS for these applications. What are the advantages? All right, this four-year-old boy in case number one has been limping for five days. Mom thinks his hip is painful. He's got a axillary temperature of 37.5, but she says, you know, he has had fever during this illness. The rest of his vitals look okay. And then my questions to you are about the things that we all would kind of think about as our differential for a kid like this. Probably transient synovitis, but hey, there's a differential and we want to approach it with some degree of accuracy. And so we want to approach it using this transducer if we're going to be doing point of care ultrasound of the hip, which is the first thing we're going to talk about. And when we say the hip, we really mean point of care ultrasound for hip fusion. Now, this is obviously not a four-year-old kid, but this is a position that none of us really like. The four-year-old kid who limps a little bit, climbs on and off the bed, I mean, my differential for serious things kind of decreases with that appearance, appearance? but the, the 16 month who, who just sits like this and cries and had a 40-degree triage, triage is not, not a picture of super, super happy one. Um, um, so we so know we that when the hip joint, joint is, is under, under tension, tension, when the nose is under tension, tension this flex flex and it's flexed and rotated, is it is a position of comfort. It's a low position of the joint. joint. Uh, and, uh, that, and that, that means sometimes, sometimes performing, performing the ultrasound, the ultrasound where, where that super flex position is not capable of forgetting getting your program wanted to be. Uh, the more, more likely it is that you have a septic hit that hard or that tech can be to do this, you're going to try to get rid of some of that. You don't need to extend it, but this is like more than 93 reflections. It's going to impede putting your probe where you want to put it. And where you want to put it is in a longitudinal orientation along the femoral neck towards the femoral head, which generally means a position like this. So this is a kid with an affected hip, so they want to keep their leg in some degree of flexion, and you're using an assistant to sort of combat some of that degree of flexion, and then running your probe essentially along 
the long axis of the thigh, right up at the inguinal crease, and just rolling back and forth, lateral to medial, until you see the appearance of the femoral neck coming up to the femoral head. And we'll show some pictures of what that looks like. So with the probe marker towards the patient's head here, you will, as you bounce lateral to medial, at some point hit a view like this. So this is our femoral neck, this bone structure here, and then it begins to bulge into the femoral head. And what's this part here? Yeah, that's the growth plate. And what's this dark material here? What's that? The capsule. Or the synovial fluid within the capsule, yeah. And then here we've got what may be some tendon fibers. To me, that's nonspecific, like musculoskeletal tissue. And it's obviously labeled normal here, uh, but this is the area of greatest interest for us, this curvature, this concavity, because it's where fluid is going to accumulate in an effusion, and it's going to cause bulging in this area. So the point of inflection of this concavity, the point where you think is like the center of it, um, is called the anterior synovial recess of the hip because we're shooting in from the anterior. And that's our area of interest for looking for effusion, which is nicely labeled here. So you can see here that I've got fluid that's spilling out down that area to my anterior synovial recess, which would be this area here. Uh, it allows me to see, uh, hey, you know, I've got some of this like soft tissue sitting on the bone itself. That's the interior part of the capsule. Here's the uh, exterior part of the capsule. And here's the fluid in between. Can I ask where the growth plate is? How do you tell that from the skiffy? Oh, can, can you diagnose skiffy on ultrasound? And they talk about it in very few other places. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's my main answer for, for that part. I think that um, there's a lot of these applications where a person has done it once or twice, and there's a couple of case reports. And there is some radiology literature out there about uh, ultrasound for Skiffy, mm -hmm. but you see it done very, very rarely. I guess if you see this in someone who you would expect to go right to mm -hmm. have closed, then right. can that be diagnosed? Or? I will be honest. I don't know. I have never looked for Skiffy with um, with ultrasound. Yeah. So this is what I mean about these are the frontiers. Yeah. And, uh, no, I mean, I couldn't tell that it's something abnormal. Um, so when we redo this talk in the future, I can't wait for the part about <laughs> Skiffy. <laughs> I don't like things in general where it's like a three-dimensional property. Like mm -hmm. Skippy is something that you should see posterior, you know, like kind of like angulating in this uh, dimensions that we really don't get unless we're comprehensively finding a way to go around that that joint. And so if you're having one single view, I don't think there's a future where you're going to say, oh, you definitely don't have or do have Skippy just by doing focus. But could it be a so, in if you see it? Um, Maybe, but then how bad is the skiffy? And, that you, know, you couldn't see it on like, x-ray. What's ortho going to say when you tell them that you've got an ultrasound that you may be showing a skiffy? They're going to say, I want an x-ray. So, uh, I'm, I'm interested. Is Jad still there? Um, Jad, I'm interested in your experience. Have you um, used Pocus at all in skiffy cases or had any uh, victory with that? Not at all. To be honest, honest Skiffy is, Skiffy is so, rare. so rare. I don't even use it don't for Skiffy. Skiffy. I use it yeah. a lot use for hips. So, so I look so to I look see if I can see head. femoral head and any displacement, but the literature I've seen on it doesn't really convince me that there's good evidence enough that I start using it to replace x-ray at this point. Okay. Okay. And anyone else out there have any experience with... Um, Taking a hip ultrasound approach in skiffy patients. Okay, cool. All right, so 
um, there is often some debate about like, well, how do I measure this effusion? And what are the measurement sizes? And, and some of the debate is like, do I measure parallel to the plane of the beam? Like, should I just be measuring from the bone upwards? Do I include the capsule or do I just measure the dark contents within the capsule? And my take from my literature read is that you should measure um, from that point of inflection uh, in the imagining that this whole thing is a circle and you're trying to head to the center of it. So not in the direct plane of the beam, not straight up and down like this, but at the angle that you think represents the broadest part. Now, in doing that, lit review to try to find the answer to that question and these ones about like okay so it's five millimeters of absolute size of your effusion makes it an effusion instead of um, physiologic fluid or a difference of two millimeters from one side to the other these are numbers that are quoted a lot from adult literature um, you also will find people saying come on it's just whether this surface is now bulging up this Lips surface, versus convex versus concave, it should run uh, in the same plane as the concavity of the bone here. The anterior surface of the joint capsule should have like a U shape here. And if instead it has like a dome shape like this, that equals effusion. And that matches with my experience. I've never really struggled with, is this an effusion or not? It's like, boom, it's there. It looks a bunch different than the other side. My ability is to this is the convex concave.